open up our Notability app and it's going to walk you through um, some of the different pieces and ways to use Notability. So that's up to you. I really would recommend that you go through and walk through the whole piece because it's going to tell you all the really cool things that you can do with Notability. Besides that, we're going to go up here to this little area right here, which is like your library button, and it's going to take you back to your original um, main screen for Notability. It's going to look like this. Okay, so it's already kind of walking you through some major steps. So you're going to click here anytime you need to create a new note. But what we're going to do is just set it up so that we have um, our Notability app nicely organized for all of our classes. So you're going to come up here and you're going to click the plus button. Once you click the plus button, I would like for you to click create a divider. And you're going to create a divider for every um, class period that you have. So. I would just suggest that you just title it period one, okay? And click done, and then make another one for period two, and so on. Do that along with me as I am creating them for me. So just go through all of your class periods and create a divider, create a divider for each period. So you'll see that I'm just going into the plus symbol and saying create divider and then I'm clicking the done button every single time I am finished typing what I need to have typed there. And one more time, last class period. Teachers, feel free to go ahead and pause until all students have created a divider for every class. Once you have a divider for every class, the next thing that you'll need to think about is when you go into class, your teachers are probably going to instruct you to create um, subjects for individual helping with organization. So let's pretend that you have my class for period one. So um, under period one, I'm going to head and create a subject and I'm going to title it, um, let's see, timed prompts. I'm a language arts teacher. We have timed prompts in our class. So I'm going to create a subject called timed prompts. And once I have that, you'll notice that it's popping down here um, underneath period six. But let's say I have period one as my language arts class. In order to move them, I'm going to have to go up here to the edit button. I'm going to click edit and then I'm going to drag over here where it has the three uh, dashes over in the corner. I'm going to put my finger on that and I'm just going to pick up timed prompt and move it under the class period that I have language arts. So if I have language arts first period, I'm going to move it to first period or underneath there. Then anytime my teacher says, I want you to create a new note for timed prompts, today we're doing a timed prompt. I would click on that particular subject and create a new note in that subject. So I would just suggest that you wait until you get into your classes and when your teacher asks for you to create the different subjects that you want, you'll do that for those classes. Okay? Now, in order for you to see whatever you have in each class, you have to make sure that you have the down arrow button showing and it will show you all the different subject um, areas that you have. If you ever need to go in and edit any of those, you're going to again click the edit button up here in the corner, this button up here in the corner, you're going to click edit and then you can go into the little cogs for each of these individual things and you can change you can change stuff up. So you can change the name, you can change what color it is and all that kind of stuff. Um, another thing to know about Notability is that when you um, are in edit mode, no, not that button, down here at the very bottom you can edit the functionality of Notability for you. So you can go in and just like we did last time you can add your online storage so I really would recommend as you're setting up Notability that you go in and log in with your email, your student email, right? So you're going to log in and click and um, click sign in so that you can get that all set up. Um, and then you can also go down into the different um, themes that you can have. I particularly like colorful, but maybe you can mess around and see what kind you like. Um, for all of your um, documents, you can also tell it if you like to have lined paper 
or what color background you might want. I'm really going to suggest that we don't choose dark backgrounds. So I know these like polka dot examples might be kind of fun, but for the most part, your teachers are going to want you to turn it in so it's easily red. So I would select a light background for the back. But if you do want lines on your papers, that might be a good one. Or if you're in math class and you need a, um, a graphing paper, that might be good. You can change the font for your type um, whenever you select the typing. And then um, if you're left-handed, you can also change the to left-handed mode if you're going to be writing with your left hand. Um, one last thing, when you do create a new note, of course the T up here at the top allows you to type. This um, button here that I just selected the um, marker, that's just for your handwriting. The um, marker button here is for highlighting, the eraser, and the scissor button to cut things out when you don't need it. When you want to add anything, you can click the plus button in the corner and you can take a photo or you can add photos from your um, camera roll. You can also add sticky notes. So you can actually add um, like, you know, a sticky note or you can even add a text box. So if you're given a document that doesn't allow you to type over the top of it, you can add um, text box over the top and that makes it easy for you to type. Um, you can also add things from the web if you have um, you know, a piece that you want to add, um, a website or something that you need. You can also go in and individually change your paper by clicking on the wrench in the corner. So again, if you're in math class and you need graphing paper, you can go in and select the type of graphing paper that you might want. In the corner over here, what looks like kind of like a deck of cards, that will also show you all of the pages that you have. And by clicking this plus sign up at the top, you can add additional pages above and below. And you can also delete pages. Um, let's see. You can also go in and edit um, items if you add a photo. So let's say I took a photo of our career project ideas that we were doing in advisory this week. And if I took a picture of it and then I go into edit, up here there's a crop tool right here. You can click on the crop tool and you can go down and make your photo more like the actual paper itself instead of having all the extra additional things. And then you can kind of drag and drop it where you need to and you can zoom in and you can work on things. So if you have a paper copy of something that you would like to add anything to, you can take a photo of it and add it right in, which is kind of nice. Um, I think other than that, if you're going to be sharing out into Schoology, the way you do that is by clicking the share out button up here at the top. And then you're going to have to click open in another app. Then you have to click open note in. And it's going to look for all of the different options that you have and you're going to select on Schoology. Once you do that, it will prompt you for which class you're going to, um, to drop it in. So that's a lot of information all on the Notability app. Hopefully you have this app organized the way that we want you to, and you have dividers for each of your classes, and then you'll listen when you go to class to what subjects your teachers want you to create and how to move things around so that you get it where you want it to be. Okay, thanks, guys.